Oh, hi folks. Everybody hear me okay? Yes, you're fine. Okay, great. Uh, wait just a, just another minute and see if anybody else wanders in. Um, not sure if uh, we have a writer this week. Alright, why am I not seeing writer? Uh... I'm here. Is, is Alexa coming? Alexa's not coming. Oh, okay. All right, oh, there you are. Uh, yeah, uh, Ryder, do you want to kick us off and talk about uh, EAP stuff? Um, I really don't have anything to report. I've been mostly focusing on some other uh, some some uh, other projects here. Um, I think there's a new uh, I think there's a new one coming uh, a, a new RC in the pipe, but uh, but I'm not sure quite where it is. Uh, yeah, Alexa said that there's a new EAP viewer out, and there hasn't been a lot of feedback on it yet. So um, if anybody is trying that out and having issues, please uh, file JIRAs. There isn't a JIRA. It doesn't exist. All right. Well, uh, let's see. So, yeah, to the best of my knowledge, uh, it's, EAP is mostly still Graham cranking on graphics issues, but uh, I haven't synced up with them for a bit. Um, and let's see, what else do we have? Um, uh, bakes on Mesh. Uh, we've had a new issue raised with... Um, about the appearance service, so basically about the handling of uh, certain types of textures in the new channels. Um, so I want to talk about that a little bit today. I'm not sure if uh, a lot of the folks here have been working with Bakes on Mesh or not, but um, we've had uh, we've had a Jira filed about uh, using universal wearables in the new channels um you know like the like the left arm and uh so the original issue had the expectation that you could have a bunch of transparent um you have a bunch of transparent textures and then the final big texture would be transparent um and We've been trying to get that to work, but in the process, that actually breaks the expected behavior in the case that um, you actually want your uh, result result texture to be opaque. Um, so I wanted to kick that around a little bit. If anybody has any comments, but I don't really understand the use case for a transparent baked texture. It it looks like. You know, the, the normal behavior, for example, if you're working in any of the old channels, is that your result texture is going to be opaque because there's always going to be a skin layer at the bottom of everything that is itself opaque. And so it, it seems like the normal use case for uh, the new channels in Bakes would be uh, that you would want to supply a universal... Uh, wearable at the bottom of the stack that uh, had something skin-like at the bottom, and it's, it would be kind of undefined what would happen if you didn't have anything. Uh, Adam, at Universal Clothing is the new universal wearable type that we're adding for Animesh, it basically gives you a mechanism for um, getting to all of the new channels because you know none of the existing wearables have access to anything except the five or whatever it was original channels. So
Okay, use case of an alpha mask cut off. Uh, so, Polly, so you're trying to actually make portions of the mesh uh, see-through using the uh, using the alpha of the bake texture. Yeah, well, in the case of, uh, like in the case of my avatar, I'll load it up now, just a second. Uh, like this thing has holes stamped in it, but it's, it's a system avatar that's, the holes are getting stamped by a separate alpha mask wearable, right? It's not, it's not, the holes aren't getting stamped by you know, the shirt or the jacket or the tattoos or whatever. Um, it's it's actually getting stamped by a separate alpha mask wearable. Now there isn't there isn't really something quite equivalent to that in the case of um, in the case of bakes on mesh. So you don't you don't really have an alpha wearable. So you're trying to use the um, so you're trying to use the alpha. Um, you're trying to use the alpha property on the mesh, combined with a, a transparent bake, as a substitute for having an actual alpha wearable. Is that right? All right. Now, there's not anything comparable in the case of um, the system avatar, right? As far as I know, the only way to punch holes in the system avatar is using the alpha wearables. Um, actually, that's not quite true. Uh, I used to do uh, skins, and I had uh, my head skin for the the texture for the head. Uh, I could make slightly transparent so that I could use the skin texture uh, or the system avatars uh, change, you know, where you can change the color of the skin before we had skins uh, to be able to change like the color of the lips or the eyeliner or the eyeshadow uh, so that I was actually using an alpha uh, uh, texture in, you know, with an alpha, not, not, not a wearable alpha. Yeah. So how, how are you specifying that then? Yeah, okay, so when I used to make skins, I would have a head texture, and I would just upload it with a, um, a, a, a PNG, not a PNG, anyway, uh, uh, that had the, the texture in the area, say, around the lips was just slightly transparent, and it worked just fine. So it, the, it does work on the Linen Lab avatar, default avatar. With... Uh... Okay, so how how are you getting the partially transparent? This was just by choosing the texture in one of your wearables to be partially transparent. Okay, uh, okay so the way it, the way it worked was like I said, I was a, a skin designer, and you would just wear the regular skin. You know, I would just on the on the head slot uh, when I was putting my skin together for my system skin, I would just upload a um, a, a PNG, no, not a PNG, uh, a Targa. They had an alpha, you know, the alpha is built into the Targa, um, right. and the lips would be slightly transparent. And so what would happen is it would actually show the, before we had skins, you know, we, we didn't even have textures for the avatars. And so there are still sliders in there to be able to change the color of your lips and the color of your skin. You could have these wild 
skin colors. And so what, what was happening is, is the texture was sitting on top of the avatar basically and the original avatar skin layer, which wasn't a, a skin at all, uh, would show through. Um, so we, you didn't have to use a wearable alpha in order to, to mm. um, make the, but, make the skin. But that wasn't, if or, I'm understanding it, that wasn't actually making the lips transparent in the sense that you could like see into your head, right? It was making them transparent in the sense that you could see something else underneath. Correct. Correct. You would actually see the, uh, the original lips of the avatar. <laughs> okay. So, but I mean, effectively in that case, there's still a, an opaque layer at the bottom of everything. You're not actually sort of punching holes in in the avatar. Correct. And if I'm if I'm right, I think I remember it only worked on the head. I can't I can't remember if it actually worked on. No, it did work on the others, the other um, the upper body and lower body because you could make uh, like uh, freckles, and you could change the color of your freckles by changing the skin color underneath um but yeah you had you had an opaque layer underneath uh which was the original avatars where we had system skin yeah okay so so it sounds like that's a little bit different scenario than what we're talking about with with bakes on mesh where it, if i'm understanding we're actually talking about trying to have a way to to basically get the effect of punching holes in the model Without a, without an um, okay, without an and alpha. so in an the case of um, so in the case of bakes on mesh, um, there's there wouldn't be you know even using the alpha mechanism, there wouldn't be any way to punch holes in say the upper body, right? Because in that case, uh, you know your your bake texture is always going to be opaque. I'm trying to remember if I did test if the if the uh, if you had a, a skin texture system skin that had uh, it was using the alpha um, if it actually went all the way through the avatar or not I can't remember. I'll have to run that test see what see what okay. happens. Yeah, uh, Beck asks why we had to have alpha masks. You mean you mean the alpha wearables? Yep, I'm not really sure the history of that. I know um, I know we implemented the alpha wearables for. Uh, nobody got all excited, but I'm going to say the words viewer too. Um, so th this was a thing that uh, I worked on shortly after I got here, and you know at the time um, we had decided to implement uh, you know tattoos and alphas, and I don't know the history of why we wanted to use the the alpha wearable as a mechanism instead of um, instead of somehow incorporating the alphas from the uh, you know from the uh, source things it, it may just be because you you do you know in in the nature of the layers that are used uh, you know there is always sort of an opaque base layer so there isn't really a way to I can actually avoid tell you hitting that I think actually give you some of the background of, or, or at least from what I gathered because I was here during that time of, of why we got the alpha wearables oh did you want me to tell you or uh, sure if you remember any more about okay. it then, uh, then I'd be happy to hear okay. about it um, okay well this is sort of my one of my claims to fame I was the first person in Second Life to create a, a sculpted foot using sculpties, a whole sculpted foot, and putting it in a pair of shoes. And back then, the only way we could hide the different parts of the avatar body was to use an invisible prim. Um, the invisible prim would be something that we'd put over the shoe, and it would actually then make the avatar's real foot invisible. Uh, the the drawbacks to that is any texture that was plate that found its way behind. Uh, that invisible prim uh, would, if it had if it had an alpha such as water, um, the water would become transparent as well. Um, and so I think Linden Lab came up with the wearable alpha to get rid of the invisible prims. 
because um, the invisible prims were using sort of a hack, um, a hack to make it invisible, mm -hmm. and and the properties of it was anything that was behind or inside an invisible prim, if that texture that was on that prim that was behind or inside the invisible prim had an alpha, was using an alpha um, layer, it, it uh, would become completely invisible. And so I think the, the wearable alphas were, were a way to get rid of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I actually remember a bit about the history there that we were trying to have a, a viable alternative to Invisiprims. That Invisiprim rendering really never worked consistently because, um, you know, the the graphics pipeline doesn't really handle sort of arbitrary ordering of of uh, you know transparent and translucent objects. Um, it, most most rendering systems don't. It just adds a lot of expense to try to handle that sort of thing. Um, so. Yeah, I remember that we wanted that as a as an alternative way to uh, to mask out portions of your model. Um, in terms, but in, in terms of the question of you know why was it designed in such a way that your uh, textures basically were always opaque? Um, you know, I, I think that's probably going really far back in the history of the avatar design. Um, may or may not have really been by design, but. That but that was the way it wound, they wound up with when they um, when they supplied these various sort of base textures that, that always wound up hitting an opaque level. So yeah, it's it's kind of an interesting question. Then is you know is the right uh, is that an invisible prim? Yeah, that's giving some interesting effects there. Um, ah. Trapped in a hall of mirrors. Um, yeah, so you know, it, it seems like the ideal solution or the the most consistent solution with what we had before would be to actually have uh, something like a universal alpha wearable that uses the same mechanism, but that uh, um, you know supports all the channels. Um, but yeah, we're we're not planning to do that for the initial bakes on mesh release. So, you know, then the question is, do we want to have this this um, you know partial masking option? Um, it's 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 kind of getting us into cases where we run into problems with the uh, pixel math. Sort of either way we do it, um, there there may be some other option that. I think it gives people what they want more of the time, but we've got to do a little more discussion on that. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably need to chat with Anchor about that so we can come up with a solution that makes sense for the initial release. Yeah, as far as all my experiments with Big Sun Mesh, the, the wearable alpha worked on the Big Sun Mesh exactly as expected, uh, as it worked on your default avatar. Uh, so that you know, I've done tests where I've had a mesh avatar set to big on mesh and then wore mesh clothing on top of that and then you wore a you know had poke through coming through and then wore a, a wearable alpha uh, to get rid of the poke through and it worked perfectly as far so the wearable alphas work just fine as far as I'm concerned yeah okay and and the wearable alphas work for uh work for Bakes on Mesh now for the old channels, right? Right, right. I hadn't tried it with um, uh, with the left, the new uh, Bake Dot, not, not the Bake Auxiliaries, the new left and right arm and left and right foot or whatever, those two new ones out. I haven't yeah. tried it with those, but it did work with the, uh, uh, you know, the upper body uh, head and lower body, you know, uh, so. Okay, and did you have to, do you have to do a certain the particular setting on the mesh to get that to work? Yeah, there was, um, um, oh, what is that setting? Uh, there is a, um, a setting that you have to have it set on. Um, I'm <laughs> having a brain fart. Alpha uh, blend or something, alpha masking? Yeah, alpha masking, yeah. Yeah, you have to have alpha masking, uh, I guess, turned on and above, like, zero. Um, that's one of the reasons why um, uh, it wasn't, like, the... Oh, what was her name who came out here? Omega Pliers. Um, she had written that strip script um, so that people could 
use the existing uh, custom avatars like Maitreya and Beleza, um, but those were set to no mod, so they couldn't set uh, the alpha masking on those. And so, because um, they were no mod, and so the alpha wearables weren't working on those particular avatars, but it was still changing the skin texture and all that. Yeah. Okay, so it, it sounds like the desired behavior is, you know, for for the new, for the old channels, it, it sounds like stuff should continue to work anyway, that you can just have an alpha, wear, alpha wearable that, that, you know, punches the holes in the model. For the new channels, it sounds like what people want is to be able to have, um, you know, transparent, a partially transparent um, textures in the universal wearable so that they get a, a partially transparent bake at the end and then that that can be used to, to punch holes in the, the new channel areas. But that we also want to be able to have opaque channels in the um, You know, opaque textures in the new wearables that then would uh, would cause those things to be, you know, opaque as normal. Okay, yeah. Um, well, as I say, we're running into issues with this. Um, still, still kicking it around, but uh, I, I appreciate all the feedback. I will um, chat with Anchor about it and see if there's anything we can come up with there. Uh, let's see, I think that's it for Bakes on Mesh. As far as we know, there's not any more viewer work coming. There's one, there's one viewer update that just bumped the version number. I'm um, not sure if we shipped that yet or not, but it shouldn't need a ton of QA anyway. Uh, question, would it be possible to add extra texture lots to the skin texture itself for Bakes on Mesh? Is, I, I don't think we're planning to do that uh, currently. The, the, you know, the intention is if you want to get a... Um, basically, there's, there's only one wearable that affects the new channels, right? The, just the universal wearable. So you should be able to get skin-like behavior by just... Um, you know, putting the appropriate contents into a to a universal that goes, you know, pretty low stack. Yeah, Teresa, I think that makes sense. If we can, uh, if we can get that kind of an effect, that's probably ideal. I'm not, I'm not quite seeing what you mean. You're, you're talking about uh, wanting to be able to have, uh, you want the, the skin wearable to have more channels or uh, or something else. Okay. Yeah, so the, I mean, the first thing we found out in, with Bakes on Mesh is we can't add new channels to existing wearable types. It causes viewers to crash horribly, um, and they just, just lead to general unhappiness. Um, so if you want to have a, a 
wearable that has new channels in it, basically you have to create a new wearable type, and that's why we wound up with the universal. So, you know, could we create a new type called universal skin or something that that has all the channels supported? Um, yeah, I I guess we could, but it's I'm not sure what that buys you. I mean, you know, it seems like a universal skin would work the same way as you know, just putting the same contents into a universal regular and just putting that bottom of your stack, wouldn't it? Oh, no, we're not creating any more channels, Lucy, sorry. All right. Uh, so I think that's I think that's Bakes on Mesh. Um, so that's where we are with it. Uh, as far as I know, the all the issues at this point are with the appearance service, and viewer is either out or about to come out, and simulator is all out. Um, let's see what else is going on. We've had some uh, work going on with the follow-on for Animesh. Uh, basically basically making Animesh is customizable. Um, that's still coming along well. I've been adding a, a new mechanism for uh, trying to trying to support sort of extended object attributes so that you know, it not only gives us a way to add parameter information sliders, but um, that it might be useful for adding other things in the future without or some currently trying to add new types of data to objects on the back end is, is a major pain. So I've uh, been doing a little bit of investigation into that and just fixing some issues with the current behavior. Um, I guess one, one thing I'm going to toss out as a question for the, uh, the LSL command for setting these visual params, and this is only going to be of interest to people who are doing LSL scripting. Just feel free to please over for a minute. Um, Currently, I've got a uh, set object visual params that takes a list, and the way the list is structured is it alternates between uh, ID of the parameter and then the value, and then the ID of the next parameter, and then the value, and so forth. And then there was a request for being able to, to also query the, the slider values, so like get object visual params. And for that one, it seems like the logical way to do it would be that it takes a list of IDs and it returns a list of values. Um, so now the question is, would it be more convenient to change the setter command to also split it out so that you've got the list of values? It takes a you know a list of IDs and then a list of values instead of having them interleave. Because then then you could make the list of IDs once and you could use it in the context of both of those commands query a bunch of values and then change a bunch of values and then change them all back. It would be it would be easier to do that. You don't have to kind of pack and unpack. So uh, anybody who's actually dealing with stuff at, at that kind of LSL level feel free to uh, express an opinion either way. Beck says, consistent approach that matches the rest of LSL. Yeah, I mean, that's that's why I did it the way that I did it originally, was that it was more consistent with, like, um, the get params functions, or the set params functions um, for, uh, you know, for, for uh, params. Uh, 
don't know about the shapes directly, Penny. Uh, it's the, the it's applying parameters individually is the um, it's just the first thing that we're implementing to to get all the kind of pieces working so that we you know can control slider values for animeshes. Um, it's not it's not saying that we will or won't also support shapes. Um, but, uh, oh, another thing I've been doing in the context of this is trying to document what the different sliders are, right? There's, there's like 254 sliders that get sent in the appearance message, but a lot of them don't actually move any bones, and so changing them using the, uh, uh, using set, set object visual params wouldn't be useful. So I've added some, box on those sliders to the Bento Skeleton Guide wiki. If you look at the bottom of this page, um, there's a list of sliders that affect bones. So we've got the ID, the name, and then which bones are affected. So you wind up with, there's about 68, I think, that actually would be useful to set using this uh, script function. But I don't think you can do anything with the information right now because we don't have a project viewer out yet. Anyway, just a little bit of a teaser there. So there's a bunch of uh, there's a bunch of sliders there that actually move bones around, and then there's also the hover slider, which uh, uh, can be used to attempt to fix the vertical positioning of your avatar. And the way Hover works with avatars is sort of busted, and so I'm not sure it's actually useful. But since we're, you know, we're kind of adding shape support for um, animeshes, a new or particularly slider support, um, so we can we may actually be able to make the hover parameter useful by sort of omitting some of the bad behaviors. At least that's the goal. Yeah. Well, uh, let's see, if you just want to reset to the default, then yeah, you could set it to the neutral values, but if you wanted to reset it to whatever it was before, then you might want to remember what it was before, right? Yeah, if you, yeah, pathfinding may have its own thing. There's, there's a really, unfortunately, very complicated set of different things that can all affect the vertical positioning of the avatar, and uh, the uh, hover parameter is just one piece of that. And it's, it's actually not the same thing as hover height. If you right-click on yourself and pick the hover height control, that's controlling something that's completely independent of the hover parameter, which is part of your shape, and is, is handled differently. And you can reposition your pelvis using an animation, which affects your height, and there's probably other things I'm not thinking of, too. The yeah you know, the the current system means well, but it it clearly wasn't uh, all designed from scratch to make sense. That's what we try to keep trying to tell people, you know. Uh, Lucy, yeah, sort of. I, what I have is a is a function that basically lets you set the 
um, set the value of any slider in the skeleton. Um, but the the list there on the wiki page is the only ones that it's actually useful to set because they could affect the appearance of a mesh. Um, there's a lot of other sliders that affect things like uh, you know the the belly chubbiness morph or the um, you know lip color things like that and you know basically meshes don't don't know about those things and so you know you could change the values but it wouldn't have any effect so um, you know the the point of this stock is to show you the things that it's potentially useful to control you know using LSL. Uh, Lucy, you say you're still using string literal inputs. Um, we're not really targeting bones, we're targeting sliders, right? There's the, so the, the ID is the, the numeric ID of the slider. Um, if you look in the avatar lad file, these are things called params. Um, and then the name, if you want to specify it by name instead of by ID, you can currently do that. Um, uh, but I mean, those are both just ways to select which param you want to change. And then the the bones list tells you, you know, which bones actually get modified by those sliders. So, for example, you know, one slider that gets that's used a lot would be the height control um, you know, ID 33. So you, know, you could take the height control and you know, you, you, if you set it to zero, you get the the shortest possible avatar, and if you get set it to one, you get the tallest possible. And as you do that, you know some properties of all of the listed bones get changed. Um, I, I think the main thing that happens is that uh, you know, some some bones kind of running up your uh, kind of up, up your legs to your to your spine and your head um, get scaled, and so that's the slider works, but then there's a, some other stuff that it tries to adjust at the same time, so as you get taller, your tail gets longer, whatever, there's, there's controls for some of the new bones as well. Oh, it's the input type with the script function. Okay, so, uh, and again, this is all potentially subject to change, but, but what you could, the way you specify it right now is you specify which slider you want to modify using either the ID as an integer or the name as a string, and then you specify the value as a float. That's currently it accepts both strings and integers. Yeah. If nobody wants to use the names, I'm I'm perfectly happy to have it just take IDs. Um, you know, it would be a little more efficient because you don't have to convert from from the strings. But I suspect in the big picture, it doesn't make that much difference. Yeah, I mean, the only reason to change it would be if we we're getting clobbered on performance for some reason. constant LSL constants for the integer since we're already accepting the names as strings anyway. But uh, I guess we could conceivably. Oh, 
Okay, so I think that's all the news. Uh, we covered Eep, we covered Bakes on Mesh, and we've covered um, Animesh stuff. And so we're basically open for uh, any other questions or things people want to talk about. Params for body physics, well, I mean, you can change the params for body physics now, it's just I don't think it'll do anything. Um, does, don't, doesn't the body physics stuff work by, um, by affecting the morphs? Or is it, or is it purely skeletal? I'm not actually sure how body physics works, so I'm not sure whether it would be meaningful to talk about supporting it for mesh or not. Okay, so yeah, I mean to the effect that you're to the extent that you're affecting collision bones, um that that could potentially do something, you know, if the mesh was rigged to those collision bones. There's there's no reason that you couldn't do it that way if you wanted to. Yeah, I haven't tried it, but if you if you had a mesh that was rigged to um, that was rigged to collision bones, and then you tried to use some kind of physics that affected the collision bones, um, I think it should work. Um, I don't know. You know, once I have a project viewer out, everybody can can uh, jump in and see what they think. But if that's the case, then there may be some additional sliders that it would be useful to document that aren't actually covered here. Okay, well, yeah, to the extent that, uh, to the extent that physics works with, uh, rigged meshes, um, it, it should work just as well with animeshes. It's, it's all, you know, it's all going through the same basic stuff. Is there ever a possibility of seeing more body shape sliders? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't rule it out. I mean, one. I mentioned that I'm trying to uh, make the the mechanism for extending uh, objects, kind of adding new attributes, simpler. Um, and you know, one advantage of doing that would be that it would make it easier to add something like. Uh, like new sliders um, that we have, uh, we have a lot of things that are kind of hard coded now that are hard to modify, but that we might be able to, uh, you know, change more easily using it. But that's that's all kind of speculative. We're we're not planning to add new sliders for this particular project, but uh, you know, it's it's certainly clear that it would be a nice thing to have. Um, 
you know, if we wanted to be able to have like a wing size slider or, a, uh, you know, length of your, uh, you know, second pair of arms slider. I don't know if anybody actually uses those, but they're in the skeleton. Um, but, uh, yeah, currently we don't have those and it's not, uh, it's not slated for the future anyway. Uh, Teresa asks, could scripted slider manipulation also affect avatar skeletons? Uh, yeah, not currently. It, it would be trickier to have scripted control of avatars because there's already a mechanism for the, the back-end servers, you know, to specify what the avatar is supposed to look like. You've got appearance messages that try to set that stuff. So if you if you're getting you know, a message from the appearance service, and then you do something with sliders, and then you send a different type of message to change stuff there. It, um, I think you could wind up with sort of, it's kind of like two different systems fighting over the steering wheel, you know. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it, there might be some way we could do that at some point, but uh, it, it would require some, some additional work that isn't really an issue with Animesh because Animesh isn't. Second pair of arms. Yeah, the, the bento skeleton has uh, uh, has an additional set of mid limbs. If you wanted to make a, you know, bug avatar or something. How far out anime shape support is? Uh, you know, as I said, I, I, we don't really know what the plan is for shape support at this point. Uh, the first thing I want to do is just get something out there that people can use that does, um, you know, scripted control of individual parameters, and then we'll we'll look into the shape topic. But uh, you know, hopefully, we'll have we'll have at least something that people can start to test in the in the not too distant future. We don't get pulled off onto some kind of emergency thing. Uh, question about sim overload and bug two two six three nine one. Just a second, opening that. Yeah, I have not heard anything about this. Is uh, is the claim that Sims in general are more prone to bog down now, or uh, is it that there's specifically an issue with pathfinding that's that's come along recently? I was typing, but speaking's faster. Uh, we actually have been getting a number of reports regarding regarding uh, sim performance, and we are. It is. It is on the. It's in fact on the top of my queue. So we are looking at these things. Oh, okay. Thanks, Ryder. I'm not looking at pathfinding specifically, uh, mostly script scheduling animates. But to the extent that pathfinding is getting crowded out by sim performance issues, presumably, if we yeah, improve something there, it, it should help. Oh, 
Yes, uh, some of that has to do with with the time slice allocated and and who is taking who is taking that time slice or or which of those subsystems is taking that time slice. A specific, a, specific, a specific amount of time allocated per frame cube uh, on, on the simulator and a certain percentage of that can be occupied by, by script execution and, and so, so when I'm talking about that particular percentage of time I, I will refer to it as a time slice Well, speaking of staffing issue, I should put in a, my usual plug. We are uh, trying to hire a senior graphics person. We have a slot open right now, so if you or someone you know might want to do graphics development for Second Life, uh, just drop us a line. I'll paste the link to the um, job listing in just a second. Oh, um, whoops. Hello. Hello? Oh, there we go. Uh, Vera, if we have time, uh, uh, I've been at the end of the meeting here, I've been experimenting with the bake saw mesh and I can give you a report of what works and what doesn't work. Oh, okay, thanks. Uh, unfortunately, I have another meeting right after this one ends, so I'm going to have to run off in, in five minutes. Um, if there's anything we can talk about briefly now, that would be fine. Oh, okay. Um, well, I, I just did a test while we were having the meetings. I was testing. Um, I'm, I'm obviously I have a mini avatar. I'm wearing an, a full body alpha. That alpha is out the whole body, and so uh, the full body alpha wearable. Uh, it it uh, makes the eyes completely invisible. The hair is completely invisible. Uh, the the head, the upper body, and the lower body. All the new auxiliary. Uh, that, that we've added, the new auxiliary baked channels, are not affected by a wearable alpha. Um, interesting though, the, uh, the skirt, the system skirt, is not affected by a wearable alpha, but if the texture that you're wearing on your system skirt has an alpha, you know, uh, such as, you know, like I'm wearing a skirt where it has like a slit in it, so that the slit is completely transparent, that that shows perfectly um, as far as it that area is transparent and it is gradient and it or it can be a hundred percent transparent so those who want to have like say a, a, a texture and not use a wearable alpha to make part of the texture invisible use the skirt the system skirt for to apply that texture 
with the pixel mesh. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, the skirt is kind of an orphan uh, feature, I think. It's it's kind of like the you know the system skirt and the system hair are kind of things that don't get used very much, um, but they might have some kind of interesting applications. Yeah, I can see why they overlooked the system skirt when they were figuring out the, the wearable alphas. Everybody would notice if their eyes were not being alpha out or if their system hair it was, even though it's inside the skull, wasn't being alpha out when you were wearing an alpha. But hardly anybody wears system skirts, so it makes sense why that particular <laughs> thing was overlooked. Um, uh, so it might have been a happy, happy thing that it did. Hmm. I'm thinking the system hair may actually use alphas to mask um, the the portions of the the hair object, um, but of course most people don't even use the hair object because they don't use system hair. Yeah, I was looking at the system hair and the system eyes to see if the textures that were on them um, had alphas. You know, uh, where an alpha. Alpha in the texture, and they both did. Um, and on the bakes, on on the auxiliary baked channels, the new channels that we got, I did put uh, a system tattoo and put on those uh, a texture that was like half transparent, half solid, and just to see what would happen. And in that case, what would happen is the transparency area just became black because um, it makes sense that the opaque uh, thing that you're, that's being flattened onto, I guess, is just a black texture. Mm, okay. Oh, that's right. The uh, the eye texture doesn't just include the eyeballs. There's some uh, extra stuff for the eyelashes too. Yeah, the system avatar is a source of constant wonderment. Well, uh, I think that's about it for this week. Uh, at least I have to run off. Um, but uh, thanks for coming, everybody, and we will keep you posted. Awesome. Thanks, Fear. Thanks, Lindens. Thanks, everyone. Bye, Kathy. Thank you.